OK, so um, let's go ahead and switch over to my screen. And this is something <clears throat> that I saw in the news today, which is funny because I read about it two days ago. So I um, support Patrick Wardle on Patreon. So I get like an early uh, look into this blog post before it hit the news. But there was a new piece of macOS malware called Dazzle Spy, which was being deployed in, primarily in Asia and Hong Kong. Um, that uses a couple really interesting mechanisms to specifically specifically go after macOS computers. Uh, and Patrick Wardle does, always does these really, really excellent write-ups. And for anybody that's interested in reverse engineering, not only does he have a free book on it right here, which I was uh, starting to read last night, and it's really, really good. <coughs> he also writes up these blog posts that include like samples of the malware and all sorts of other things for anybody that wants to get into reverse engineering. So if you're curious about this sort of stuff, then these write-ups are absolutely awesome. Reading about them on the news just really doesn't give you the full kind of look into like how cool this malware is and exactly what it does in order to be sneaky. So a couple of cool things about this. First, um, there are tools out here that are free and easy to use that Patrick Wardle makes that will catch this malware. Um, so I have a lot of these tools, um, such as What's Your Sign, and some of the other ones that we'll be coming across as we go through here, um, which kind of look for behavior that malware needs to do in order to succeed, stay persistent, connect to its C2 server, uh, and tries to give the user as many chances as possible to detect and stop this behavior before it gets really bad. So um, on this piece of malware, just running the strings uh, utility on it will pull out lots of different strings, inclu including like a hard-coded C2 server that's where it's getting its command and control information from and where it phones home to in order to you know, proceed to the next step or download some sort of you know, additional module it was running. Um, and what's cool about this also is the way that this spreads. So I think that there's a, Patrick also makes these really easy to understand graphs. Let's see if there's one here, uh, maybe not. Um, so the way that this spreads is basically by um, targeting Safari insta uh, like browsers instead of other browsers that don't have a couple of capabilities that make this malware really cool. When this is downloaded by Safari or when it, a Safari website goes to a page that automatically downloads this file, it will also automatically extract it and try to run it, um, which doesn't seem like a great idea. But because this piece of malware is able to take advantage of this convenience feature that just exists on Safari, it's able to be particularly um, I guess like easy to kick off compared to another browser or compared to another operating system. So it's just interesting to see these things that are, are built very specifically for you know, Mac OS and for the type of browser somebody using the default configuration would be using. Um, what I like is that these free tools uh, such as BlockBlock um, was were able to detect when this malware was starting up, um, installing a launch agent, which is obviously something that most software does not do. Uh, trying to connect to a random raw IP address, which is something that you obviously want to be alerted to. And then also, if you were looking through all the things that have been installed on your macOS computer, you can see that launch items, anything that gets a hit with virus total is probably not a good thing to have persistently launching on your computer. So this malware is not undetectable. That It is novel, though, and it's interesting the way that it's taking advantage of some Safari convenience features in order to be um, you know, very, very well targeted towards the people it's going after that are using Mac, maybe Mac OS with all the defaults enabled. They're not using Firefox. They're just using the built-in browser. So pretty cool. And uh, again, very comforting knowing that as this is being analyzed, the researchers also talk to, talking about the way that free tools can stop this in its tracks in three separate places. So all hope is not lost, but it is interesting to see that some of these well-targeted Mac OS pieces of malware um, are pretty difficult to stop if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so. Pretty cool. Apparently, the Chinese government was actually using that malware. If we switch over to my screen real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's it called? Dazzle Spy malware. Dazzle Spy, yep. <laughs> yeah, but they're using it to target like people that are pro democracy, and they've um, essentially injected scripts on various pro democracy sites or sites that are at least purporting to be but secretly belong to the government. <laughs> and um, basically, in one of the like startup loader scripts on this site, it will go ahead and reference another site that uses JavaScript in order to detect if um, the operating system is using Mac OS. And then if that's detected, then it's able to basically use a JavaScript um, stager to download this malware and then um, exploit the user's machine. Yikes. So yeah, real scary stuff. Real scary stuff. OK, I think that's just about all the time we have for today. 
Alex, thank you very much for joining us today. And if you had a question that we didn't get around to answering, or if you think we missed a piece of news, make sure to leave it on the YouTube video because we will go ahead and answer it on our live Q&A every Tuesday. Thank you also to Zam for the news and to everybody who was with us live in the chat. It's great to have you with us and we hope to see you on Tuesday. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye.